John has a development company that in Silicon Valley has grown and has been one of the premier builders in Silicon Valley. Uh, driving from the hotel where you're staying or driving here from the, uh, from the airport, uh, you would have passed at least uh, one or two of uh, John's, uh, John's buildings. Uh, but I think more importantly is what they've been, done, been doing in their, in, their, in their foundation. And I think it's more importantly that uh, really they have become philanthropic leaders here in, in, uh, in Silicon Valley. And they have really done a, a wonderful job in the way they analyze and vet their, uh, their investments here in Silicon Valley. And uh, the, the, the campus where my children and grandkids go to high school, uh, other campuses uh, here in the valley, as well as this, this school, has uh, been the recipients of their generosity in buildings that are, that are on these campuses. Uh, th their uh, emphasis uh, has been on education re recently, and I'd like to just talk about a couple of things that they, in fact, do. They have a program called the Serato Academic uh, Learning Academy. They call it the SEAL program. And it's a multi-year program, five-year program. It's improving the English skills of Spanish-speaking children, K to third grade, so that when they get into school, that they will uh, be successful because they will have been, been through the, the, uh, the ability to speak and understand uh, Spanish English. This program uh, is data-driven, and the results of, of the programs up to now it clearly shows that this investment is paying off with these, uh, with these kids. Uh, the Sobratos also are involved in San Jose in a, uh, a new initiative, and that's bringing the, uh, the grammar schools up to a, a network where you're consolidating uh, all the uh, HR, the finances. Uh, Father Brennan McGuire is the, the leader of this here. Uh, and it's really going to uh, bring, uh, I think, new life to a lot of schools that were on the, uh, on the uh, margin. And uh, finally, uh, John is uh, a big supporter, a lead supporter of the new Crystal Ray High School that will be uh, opening in 2014 uh, here in, uh, in, in San Jose. So I've, I've worked with uh, John on that uh, project and uh, uh, it, it, it's, uh, he brings the businessman's uh, uh, thoughts to uh, everything that uh, uh, goes into uh, starting these, uh, these schools. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to, uh, that because of your commitment to Catholic organizations and, and causes in uh, Northern California here, to congratulate uh, both, uh, both of you uh, for the impressive work and uh, uh, Jeff, maybe you and uh, John and Sue. There you go. We're really honored to uh, offer the 2013 Leadership Roundtable Best Practices Award to the Soprano Family Foundation, honoring its steadfast commitment to Catholic organizations and causes in Northern California and the spirit of partnership that guides its worth. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, BJ. Thank you, BJ, for your kind words. And Jeff, good evening. Since we founded the Sobrato Family Foundation in 1996, education has been a high priority with our board. Since our founding, 
we've donated about $21 million in general operating support, program grants, and free office space to educational nonprofits. Last year, we created a new fund, a $2 million annual fund, which provides direct student support during and after school time, professional development for teachers, and parent and community engagement. In order to qualify for another round in, in, in future years, the grantees must show us meaningful metrics of systemic change. Even though 5,300 students are being served in 87 public schools and 322 educators have received professional development, we want to make sure that our money is making a difference in the outcomes instead of just by the number of those being served. Among the highest need kids, it's clear that English language learners are the most challenged. As you may know, the Silicon Valley Hispanic population is becoming the majority. And if this valley is going to continue to thrive, we must educate that population so they can gain the skills necessary for today's workplace. That is why we created our SEAL program that BJ touched on. It stands for the Sobrato Early Academic Language. Our program starts with dual language instruction when a child is three years old and enrolled in a preschool. We, our goal is to have that child to be academically literate by the time he or she is in the third grade. Early intervention by developing the home language with English, together with high levels of bilingual literacy, provides the students with a huge advantage. Today, SEAL is working in 48 classrooms, serving 1,300 children, and supported by 172 teachers. Furthermore, we engage about 480 parents to reinforce the SEAL program at home and require each uh, adult to read to their children daily. The statistics being monitored for this program are being accomplished by a Dr. Leary, a PhD at Stanford, excuse me, at San Jose State nearby, and it's proven that SEAL works. So much so that SEAL is being expanded also in the Redwood City School District as well as the Santa Clara City School District, Oak Grove District, and the San Lorenzo Districts. To date, We've spent about $5 million on pilot programs in Redwood City and San Jose schools, but it's very satisfying to know that these districts that I mentioned will be paying for the majority of the cost to expand next year into 10 additional public schools, reaching 7,500 more students. Our latest educational endeavor is a $2, billion, a $2 million matching grant for the Diocese of San Jose to kickstart the St. Catherine Drexel School Initiative, whereby governance of the parochial schools will move from the parish priests to the diocese to encourage more collaboration and efficiencies. Seven of the diocese's highest need schools in predominantly low-income parishes will compose the first cohort this fall. And key to this 21st century educational initiative will be a blended learning model where online technology is employed in the, in the classrooms with real-time assessment so teachers can direct their instruction to different competency groups and thereby have individual learning. Since this method of instruction is emerging with many software choices, where some work and some don't, the School of Education right here at Santa Clara University is creating a blended learning academy. More than 100 teachers and administrators will participate for a year of professional development, starting off with a two-week program that is going on right now. Lastly, uh, BJ and I are co-chairs of the board of directors of, the, of Cristo Rey High School being formed here in San Jose. Cristo Rey students go to class four days a week and one day a week work in white-collar entry-level jobs. The various companies that hire a team comprise of about four of our kids pay about $30,000 a year, which covers 65% of the cost of educating the kids. Now nationwide, only 58% of Latinos graduate from high school. And even worse, 
44% of those dropouts are still unemployed by the age of 24. And you know what happens with the gangs and the prisons and all the rest. Nationwide, approximately 95% of the 27 Crystal Ray School graduates go on to college, which is a phenomenal statistic and why we got interested when BJ asked us to. Our goal is to have 500 students by the fourth year, commencing with 125 freshmen in the fall of 2014. Father Peter Papps of the Society of Jesus, the current president of the Sacred Heart Nativity School here in San Jose, has agreed to be our president of Crystal Ray San Jose. Father Papps, would you please stand up and be recognized? This is a huge risk for Father Peter. I mean, he's got an established school. It's been open for 10 years, very successful. And asking to move to a new startup, you know, that takes guts. So thank you, Father. There are 27 Crystal Ray schools across the United States, and it's time we have one in San Jose. So in conclusion, I'd like my wife, Sue, we've been married for 53 years, to please stand up. Sue and I would both like to thank the leadership group for this award this evening. Thanks again. How blessed our church is by effective, strategic, generous philanthropy. I applaud you and thank you so much for your witness. The Roundtable has long appreciated the role that philanthropy has played in uh, advancing the mission of the church. We have also long valued the role that women religious have played in advancing the mission of the church. And to present our next award, I would like to call my colleague, Peter Denio forward. Peter is the director of the Standards for Excellence program for the Leadership Roundtable on Church Management, and is an example of a young adult who has dedicated his life in a very meaningful and effective way. Um, Peter. Thanks, Carrie. I feel so privileged to stand here today to be able to introduce to you CSJ Ministries, which is an arm of the congregation of uh, St. Joseph and uh, those wonderful women um, who have uh, the characteristics of best practice. Um, and in our opportunity to work with them with the Standards for Excellence, uh, I, along with many others, have had the great opportunity to observe some of the great work that they're doing. Um, CSJ Ministries as an arm it was really created uh, to be able to support uh, between 25 and 30 um, ministries, which is, uh, provides services to those who are uh, underprivileged, uh, battered, uh, or battered women or women who uh, suffer from violence in, in the homes, uh, their wellness or spirituality centers, development programs for young children um, and families who can't afford the child care that they need uh, to support them in their family life, um, uh, food pantries. These are the types of services that the CSJ Ministries cares for. Um, and CSJ Ministries, um, directed by Sister Janet Fleischacker and Bill Grass, um, Really, what they do is they support these ministries by providing uh, assistance in supporting their governance efforts, helping them with their programs and their ministries, supporting them uh, with visioning. Um, and it's a great dedication uh, for uh, the Congregation of St. Joseph to support them by dedicating these services of these two individuals 
to support those ministries. And I just want to point out four things that we found very significant that they are doing uh, that has been helpful to these ministries that help so many. Uh, one is vision, uh, in that uh, the Congregation of St. Joseph uh, had the vision to be able to look at their charism uh, and want to see that carried in their ministries, uh, perhaps even beyond their own community uh, someday. And to establish uh, that charism in these various ministries uh, that uh, the hope is to be able to pass on beyond the lifespan uh, of themselves who are currently serving um, in, in the congregation themselves. Uh, secondly is collaboration, the theme of our, of our time here together uh, this, these few days. Um, CSJ Ministries uh, truly partners with those directors of those ministries gives them subsidiarity to make the responsible decisions themselves. We've noticed great trust and care um, in supporting them, but also calling forth the great challenging questions um, that uh, good governance uh, and effective management of programs would call for, uh, for them to be able to work together and to uh, achieve their mission of their organizations. Best practices. Um, well before we got there, uh, the CSJ ministries were working to, uh, to put uh, in place impact assessments of their ministries, encouraging strategic plans uh, for, for the ministries that they're a part of, um, assisting them with their governance issues. And quite frankly, um, uh, having spoken to them over, the, over time, uh, just being able to listen to them make the hard decisions about when uh, it's not possible to sustain the ministry, what are the decisions that need, they need to do to perhaps even close a ministry or find a different way to create that ministry opportunity, uh, which is very impressive. And, I, and I'll end uh, in my description of, of how we found them to be uh, so worthy of this award by talking about the impact of their ministries. I had the great opportunity of being uh, at one of their ministry sites uh, and uh, working on the standards for excellence uh, with some of their staff and board of one of the ministries. Um, it just so happened that uh, one of the women who uh, and her child who was at, uh, at one of the shelters uh, that they ran came to visit uh, the religious women who were a part of that shelter. Um, and she had been a part of that transitional housing for uh, several years ago and wanted to come back just to meet uh, and talk to um, the women who were a part of her experience. Um, and to see the joy of, of the young child who had grown several years since then, um, and the joy of the woman to uh, meet up with and to spend time uh, with the women of, of, the, of the CSJs uh, was valuable. But perhaps even uh, more profound for me was uh, that I heard after I had um, left her presence uh, that she had donated and contributed a contributed thousand dollars of her own money, which was in my uh, estimation far beyond uh, what her uh, means would allow back to that ministry herself because of what it had done for her. Um, that's just one of the many examples uh, in the CSJ ministries that we've come across. And it is my great uh, honor to stand and share some of that with you so that you could help me warmly, warmly uh, embrace them in the work that they're doing. Um, so at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Jeff Bozzi again up to read the citation and for Bill Gress and also Sister Lucy Silvio, who is the board chair of CSJ Ministries to come up and to receive that award. <laughs> Thank you so much. On behalf of the Leadership Roundtable, we are delighted to present you the 2013 Best Practices Award to the CJ Ministries, honoring its innovative, proactive, and collaborative approach to affirm, strengthen, and support over two dozen ministries that live out the charism of the Congregation of uh, St. Joseph, and recognizing its commitment to good governance and co-responsibility. Congratulations.
Well, we are very grateful and honored to accept this award in the name of the Congregation of St. Joseph and CSJ Ministries with a passion to continue the founding mission that we had. Seven congregations of Sisters of St. Joseph came together in 2007 to form one congregation. Faithful to our original mission, the new congregation of St. Joseph draws its membership over 600 women religious and over 500 lay associates from seven formerly autonomous congregations of Sisters of St. Joseph. We all trace our roots back 357 years to our foundation in France in 1650. And the founding congregations really look toward the future with a vision and a creation similar to that of their beginnings. As I said, that was in 1650. We went through the French Revolution. And then there was this, after the refounding, after the French Revolution, the sisters came to the United States and to many other parts of the world. So that we are all over the world now. And we certainly believe that part of the reason that our, our mission has continued to spread is because it's one that our world so desperately needs. Our mission, the, missions of the, the mission of the sisters and of all of our ministries is active, unifying love, that all may be one. And that is, of course, a response to the gospel prayer of Jesus. So from the beginning of our reconfiguration journey, the goal of our coming together has been the shared stewardship of our Sisters of St. Joseph mission and participation in the work of the Spirit. So we're trying to read the signs of the times to, we see critical needs, and we see needs for new models and examples of groups coming together and institutions coming together in new configurations and unions for the sake of this gospel, for the common good of the people of God. In 2007, when these congregations came together, each of the seven founding congregations had between three and seven sponsored ministries. And of course, at that time, each of the ministries would have been operated by the local congregations. So suddenly, overnight, we had almost 40 ministries, which were spread across a large section of the United States, as well as in Japan and in other parts of the world. The congregational leadership could not oversee all of these sponsored ministries or exercise the responsibility that the seven founding congregations had done. We felt we needed a new design to support, oversee, and attend to the needs of these sponsored ministries. And so as a result, uh, CSJ Ministries was born. And now Bill will tell you a bit more about that. So CSJ Ministries is separately incorporated as the sponsorship arm of the Congregation of St. Joseph. We provide oversight and support on behalf of the congregation to the sponsored ministries. Our board of directors is composed of members of the congregation and of the congregation leadership team, sisters, and of laypersons with a broad range of professional experience. Our executive director is a sister of St. Joseph who had previous commitments this week with a couple of our ministries. And our associate director is obviously a layperson. Our 28 sponsored ministries are very diverse. There are six spirituality centers, three high school academies, two housing for seniors, two granting foundations, transitional housing for survivors of domestic violence, who Peter met one of our graduates of, a ministry of the Arts, an adoption agency, and ministries that specialize in serving children, young mothers, seniors, immigrants, and the poor. All but a couple are separately incorporated, and they will be by the beginning of the next fiscal year. They are in seven states, in 10 different dioceses, in 13 cities or towns. A few of the ministries are led by a sister, some sisters of St. Joseph uh, work in a ministry. 
and some serve on boards, but the vast majority of the board members are laypersons. So those responsible for the ministries are laypersons and sisters together. CSJ Ministries role is to steward the mission by helping and guiding our sponsored ministries in their desire toward excellence in mission, operations, and governance. This is where our contact with the Leadership Roundtable is so valuable. We have been encouraging and resourcing the leaders and the boards to do strategic planning, financial planning, measuring to outcomes, increase the diversity on their boards and staff, et cetera. But your standards for excellence for Catholic nonprofits holds up to them a nationally recognized third party comprehensive yet concise set of principles for effective and efficient organizations. They and we have found your standards of excellence very helpful. Several of our ministries are working intentionally to improve their governance and operations by board and staff committees studying and implementing the standards for excellence with the goal of applying for the seal of excellence. They have expressed appreciation also for your Partners in Excellence program, for the extensive resource packets that you have published, and for the personal assistance of Peter Denio. As an aside, CSJ Ministries as an organization is newer than all but one of our sponsored ministries. So as a relatively new organization and as a model to the ministries, we formed a committee of our board members, the executive director and myself, and syst systematically used your standards for excellence and resource packets to put into place board approved policies and procedures that we had not yet instituted. As a result of this work, our board at their meeting earlier this month passed a resolution that we apply for the seal for excellence. So on behalf of CSJ Ministries, the Congregation of St. Joseph, and our sponsored ministries, Sister Lucy and I are pleased to accept this reward and are grateful for the recognition but we are more grateful for all the resources and services of the Leadership Roundtable that make our work so much easier. Thank you. Thank you.